What is up, everyone? Welcome back to All Takes No Whiffs. I'm Alex, and that's Christian, and we are continuing our preview of every single team in the MLB for 2023. And for this video, we are moving on to the Chicago White Sox. This is a team that I am really, really looking forward to this year. I know I say that about every single team so far in every video, but this is a team I actually have really high expectations for. And I know last year, um, everyone had high expectations for them last year. So hopefully this team is going to be able to turn it around this year. Guys can stay healthy, but um, I'm looking forward to get into this. Without a doubt, uh, the White Sox, definitely disappointing last year, but um I, I do have like some solid expectations for them, but honestly, them them losing out on Jose Abreu that really sucks. Uh, they were a 500 team last year, and they they just lost a I don't want to say MVP caliber player. Yeah, he won one in 2020, and y'all know what's up with 2020. But um, they they just lost a very plus bat, and that's going to be tough for them for sure. But they just all around they're still a very solid and pretty deep team. Uh, they finished second in the division last year, five games out of the wild card. And honestly, I don't really see that as bad considering how disappointing, disappointing of a season it was. Like if they were to meet their standards, they're they're making the playoffs. Yeah, and we saw them the make the playoffs in 2020. They didn't really do much in the playoffs mm -hmm. then. But like you said, losing Jose Abreu is going to be pretty, pretty big uh, impact on this team. Um, if you're looking at the stats on the bottom of the screen, like almost all of them for the hitters category are Jose Abreu. So they're going to be missing a lot of production um, this year. But hopefully, like I was alluding to earlier uh, in the intro, um, they got to stay healthy. This dude, Tim Anderson, he is one of the best shortstops in all of baseball. Um, he doesn't have the best power, but his contact's always there, and he always has a high average. And last year, he had he just didn't play many games, and he still was producing. Um, same thing with Luis Robert. I want to see this guy play a full freaking mm -hmm. season. We haven't seen this guy play a full season yet. And this is one of the top prospects in all of baseball the past couple of years. So, or not past couple of years, but when he was being called up. So, these two guys, those are really the two foundation pieces on this team now. Um, besides maybe Yohan Mankata, who hopefully can stay healthy again. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a, it's a track record for this team. And the thing is, is Christian was saying this earlier too. They still went 81 and 81, 500 last year. So, if this team can stay healthy and play like they're supposed to, they're going to make the playoffs. Yeah, without a doubt. And, uh, yeah, like you said, Tim Anderson and Luis Robert, those two are definitely, I think, the key pieces for their offense uh, in order for them to succeed. Uh, obviously, they got a couple guys around them. Uh, somebody I'm looking forward to uh, being back full time is uh, Eloy Jimenez returning for a full season. That would definitely be huge for them. His bat is pretty valuable, especially when he's on his game. And the addition of Andrew Benintendi, uh, putting him in left field, that's going to be huge, huge defensively. And if things pan out well, uh, they're going to get somebody similar to Tim Anderson, not matching the production, I feel like. But, like, you know, uh, getting on base, uh, having a relatively solid average. Yeah, things could definitely be solid for them. And as you guys can see, uh, when it comes to their pitching, uh, Dylan it's still in cease and, like, I don't want to say nobody else because they do have arms around him. Uh, they got Lucas Giolito still. Uh, he's... I'm a little up in the air about him, though. But He's so inconsistent. Yeah, it's honestly wild. Like, we've seen him throw a no-hitter before and obviously just – and then get shelled right after. Yeah, not get it out and give up eight runs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, Dylan Cease, um, I'm expecting a really big season from him this year again. Uh, definitely – definitely broke out last year like crazy not literally leading them in every pitching stat and i just i really feel like that's going to be important for them and it kind of sucks that they're losing they're missing out on liam Hendricks. obviously liam Hendricks is uh going through it with his health battling cancer i'm hoping that he could bounce back and i'm hoping to see him in the league again soon and i i, I really would love to see him have an impact on the white Sox whenever he does come back but yeah, it's just unfortunate that they're missing out on a, an elite bullpen arm uh, in Liam Hendricks. But uh, with the White Sox, I just I feel like I feel like we could maybe see them in the playoffs this year. I, I just don't know if like I'm on the train anymore uh, when it comes to uh, the hype that they had when they were making these moves. Oh, yeah, I mean, I can definitely see them making the playoffs. I think it's kind of kind of going to bank off their starting rotation. Um, I actually think they have one of the better starting rotations all of baseball. Um, you got Dylan Cease leading the way. Lucas Giolito, if he can figure out, he's solid. 
Lance, Lance Lynn. Lynn. Yeah, Lance Lynn is very solid too. And then they also added Mike Clevinger this past offseason. So that's another solid arm. Um, just fill that out with a fifth guy, um, probably someone – I don't even know who it's going to be, but um, they can probably call someone up or sign someone. I'm sure they've already got a s- spot filled out for there. But I think that this rotation is actually one of the better ones. I just think Lucas Giolito, if he can figure out that walk rate, I mean, it, it, he's going to be fine because he his changeup is absolutely disgusting. Oh, yeah. Now, one of the premier changeups in all of baseball. Uh, honestly, uh, it's kind of interesting how uh, – Dylan Cease broke out like this because, you know, before before going into 2022, kind of thought Giolito was the ace for the White Sox, and that was like an alarming thing in my opinion. Like if Lucas Giolito was your ace, that it's kind of up in the air. But Dylan Cease uh, definitely solidified himself uh, to lead that rotation. And, yeah, I just, I just feel like the leaders of this team, that's that's they're going to have to push, uh, push them over the edge if they really want to have success. Those veteran guys are definitely going to have to lead the way. Um, some of those younger guys are those veteran guys now, so it would be nice to see um, them step up. I know Andrew Vaughn is one of those young guys who I'm really expecting to have a, a kind of, I want to say a breakout year because he kind of broke out last year, but I want to see him have a better year this year. And he's one of those guys who I think can lead this team in home runs. Um, I know last year Elvis Andrews led their team in home runs with 17. Um if Elvis Andrews is leading your team in home runs, that's a bad sign first off. Sure. But if your team has less than 20 home runs, that is a, a leading. That is another bad sign too. So hopefully this team can get a little more power. And I think this is just going to be another thing with the White Sox all year long. If they stay healthy, they're going to have a few guys over 20 home runs. I think Luis Robert should have over 20. Mm-hmm. Tim Anderson could be pushing 20. And Yoel Moncada should easily have over 20. Yeah, man. Honestly, in t- today's league, with how much power is uh, is uh, emphasized, yeah, they're gonna definitely have to step it up. But I honestly feel like a full, healthy season from Luis Robert, uh, we could get like a thirty home run season for him. So at seventeen, that's just the twenty twenty two thing, hopefully for the White Sox. But patience aren't too high on them. But I, I think they could definitely have a real successful twenty twenty three season. Yeah, I think they could too. Um, I'm expecting a lot of big things out of Chicago White Sox this year. Um, I ex- I'm expecting them to make the playoffs. I don't know if they're going to make any noise in there. I'm going to see how that pitching rotation uh, kind of pans out. Um, that bullpen, not really too quite sure how it's going to be this year. Like Christian said, hopefully Liam Hendricks can get back. Um, we are praying for him. Hopefully he can get back and be just – honestly, just be healthy. Like don't even have to come back. Just be healthy. Oh, that's all we really care yes. about. Yeah, uh, we love the game of baseball, but there's definitely there's a lot of priorities uh, in life over over the game that we love. But uh, Liam Hendricks, uh, his health and just his well being that that's the priority. But uh, would love to see him back because I know he would love to be back. Yeah, that's something else. I would love to see him competing because he is a fierce competitor. Uh, if you guys see him on the mound, that man is a dog. But yeah, uh, as for the White Sox. Who knows? Maybe the, they can get something going. But with the White Sox, hopefully they could get something going for 2023. I'm a little sick of being disappointed in them because I, I was really looking forward to what they had working um, ever since 2019, really, like what they've had going, uh, what they were building up to. And they could still get to that point. But as for the next uh, video, uh, we are going to be talking about the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah, y'all know about the Cincinnati Reds. But um I'm really looking forward to that. I'm just looking forward to them and then the other 23 teams that we will be discussing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Math is hard. <laughs> math is hard. On the spot math, though. Quick maths. But, yeah, 23 more teams after Cincinnati, and I'm just really looking forward to the 2023 season in general. Until then, though, peace. peace.